Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 4th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Amsterdam, Netherlands. I'm teaching this week the Defending Web Application class here in Amsterdam and one point that came up today in class is that really many mobile applications are just front ends for web services. So not really surprising that some web application flaws make it into these mobile apps. The latest example is the Android version of the mobile app for Medium, the blogging platform that does require a subscription for some of its stories, but you're allowed to read a limited number of these stories for free. Now, the problem is how does the site actually know how many stories you read? And apparently that's just managed via cookies that are kept on the client, in this case also the mobile app. You all sprints at Hacker Noon wrote up how he reversed the Medium mobile app to figure out how they're tracking their stories and how he actually then modified the mobile app, recompiled it and essentially created a mobile app that would allow him to read unlimited stories. Probably not the worst that can be done with this particular technique. I believe the medium is charging something like $5 a month for a full subscription, but it really illustrates nicely this problem in a lot of mobile apps that do not really take into account that they're still dealing with data coming from the user using a device that the user controls. And with that, the user in the end controls all requests being sent by this device. And sticking with learning from the attacker here for a bit more at Black Hills InfoSec, we do have a great blog post by Mike Felch and appears to be the first in a series of blog posts about red teaming Microsoft in particular, how to use Active Directory in particular if it is linked to Azure in order to, for example, attack internal networks. Lots of stuff in this blog post, really way too much to do it justice here in my brief podcast. But for example, one little tip here that I found quite interesting is if you do have credentials for a user within the organization via phishing or however you got to these credentials, you're actually able to invite guests, additional users to Azure under this company's umbrella, which if Azure is synced to the internal active directory, which it often is, can be used to then also go back to the internal network using this new account that was created and gaining essentially sort of a persistent backdoor account to the network. So if you're pen testing any environments like this, or if you're managing any environments like this, uh, definitely take a look at the blog post. Also lots of interesting tools being covered here, command line tools to accomplish some of these tasks more efficiently. And certainly makes you wonder what will come in the next part of this series. Links to tech support scams are one of the more common things that I see being spammed to our forum. And one thing that I noticed is that a lot of them appear to be done somewhat manual because usually the post does include a semi-valid response to a particular topic, but then at the end includes a link to the particular tech support scam site. Well, apparently Google has a similarly hard time distinguishing between valid and invalid ads for tech support. So they're now actually going through a manual verification process to limit some of the scam posts. And until this particular new verification program is in place, Google will actually not place any tech support ads just because they no longer are able to really figure out what is real and what is a scam. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.